What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first Time Capsule episode of 2023. I'm your host, Smooth Operative, and if you are new here, Time Capsule is a show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games that were released in the same year. Um, tonight, we focus on the year 2003 with speedruns of Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy and later Futurama. But before we jump into the action with Jedi Academy, let's uh, cover a few announcements. Um, first of all, AGDQ 2023 online is coming up this weekend, January 8th through the 15th. You can check out gamesdonequick.com for more information on that and take a peek at the schedule. Also, unapologetically black and fast submissions are open from now until the end of the night tonight, January 3rd. You can use the command exclamation mark UBAF in chat for more information on that. Um, but that's all I have for you right now. So let's get everything going. Um, please welcome our first runner, uh, Yui. Hey guys, my name is Yui and this is Star Wars Jedi Night Jedi Academy. Any percent no staff launch. I've been running this game for about maybe four to five months now, and yeah, happy to be here. <laughs> right on, and and also a uh, commentator, Covert Muffin. Hi, hi Muffin. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? How's it going? Doing good. I'm very. I'm actually really looking forward to this. For people who don't know Yui, she is an incredibly talented and skilled multiplayer saber combat person. Like we both kind of have our roots from the multiplayer communities. And uh, she is a new speedrunner, as she mentioned, but she has been improving at an alarming rate. Like she already has sub 30 on the leaderboard, which is an incredibly impressive time. So I'm very, very excited to see how she does tonight and looking forward to helping out on comms. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Um, Yui, you can start whenever you are feeling comfortable and ready. All right, so we're gonna load into the first level here and then we will start in three. Two, one, go. Okay, so first off, uh, the structure of this game is going to be two story missions followed by a group of side missions. And doing those side missions will basically improve our character and allow us uh, to progress in the story do more story missions. But here on Yavin 1B, we have a lightsaber, as you can see. And you're going to see the camera moving around a good amount. And this is not because we're kind of confused as to where to go, but really it's to build speed. So moving at a diagonal and jumping and turning into that builds us speed and then jumping over and over again allows us to retain that. Uh, and this is sort of the style of like source and quake based games uh, as Academy is based off of a Quake 3 engine. Uh, but here at the end of the mission, we have a little arena, two stormtroopers, and uh, one Sith dude that we're going to take out really fast. Nice. And then we are going to be moving on to our next story mission, which is Yavin 2. And Yavin 2 is going to unlock a bunch of basic force powers that we're going to be upgrading and utilizing throughout the entire speedrun. Most importantly, uh, is going to be none other than force jump. So in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice a blue meter that has a number that's going to be going down while Yui is jumping. And that's because she is spending force in order to be able to jump for longer and also uh, for uh, to be able to jump higher as well. There we go. Words. Uh, and, and as we progress through uh, sort of the tiers of the game, this is going to improve force jump, allowing us to spend more force and jump for higher and longer. Uh, but yeah, besides that, we have a set of other basic force powers, pull, push, fence, speed, and those will be upgraded alongside jump once we get into the next tier of missions. But here, at the end of Yavin 2, we are going to be entering a really cool sort of structure of gameplay, which are going to be known as side missions. And uh, basically, we get to choose which side missions we want to do. We only have to do four out of five in any percent. Uh, before we're able to progress with the story. But there, we, as we saw Yui menuing so fast, it's so impressive. Uh, Yui ended up leveling up a force power known as Force Lightning. So we get to choose to spend a single point to upgrade an advanced force power. But here is a big sequence break that Yui is trying to do to jump over an invisible instant kill death plane. Uh, there is just literally an invisible airplane there that Yui is trying to get over. Nicely done getting through their third try. Very impressive. That's honestly like one of the hardest jumps in in like the entire run. If I'm not if I'm not lying, it's like very very difficult to do. So so impressive to see that busted out on stage. 
Um, but yeah, so here, Tier 1 Rail, it's a very long mission. We do it first because we don't have any sort of benefit from the, the advanced force powers that we're going to unlock. But it's also arguably the hardest and most complex level uh, to get through really quickly. As we see Yui doing a really nice jump chain there. Um, and so basically as speedrunners, right, if we're going to want to reset on tier one rail, we want that earlier in the run rather than later. Uh, so we, we end up just doing it first, mostly for that reason. Um, but as we're progressing through, uh, you're going to notice some very distinct things, which I think is one of the reasons why Academy is one of the coolest speedruns out there, which is something known as bypassing velocity reduction on ground impact or VRGI for short. So basically, whenever we jump in, as we see Yui finishing the mission going on to the next side mission, whenever we jump, if we jump from same elevation to same elevation, or from lower to higher ground, then we actually end up rocking VRGI, which instantaneously cuts our speed by 50%. It is like, it is literally 50%. It's a lot, it's a lot, a lot. No, we don't uh, however, <laughs> yeah, no, we like to go fast. Uh, but that being said, if we actually jump from higher to lower ground within a certain range of heights, then uh, we are able to end up mitigating VRGI, which means that we do not proc it and we are able to maintain our speed. We're also going to see Yui uh, especially use this tech later on in the run, uh, which is something known as spin glitch, which is doing a spin animation in the air also uh, mitigates VRGI. And the so funny reason why this this occurs, uh, that spin glitch ends up mitigating VRGI, is for whatever reason, the, the developers forgot to copy and paste a single line of code. Uh, so just spinning with your lightsaber ends up causing you to, to be able to maintain your speed. All, all because of that, it's very funny. But um, here in this level, this is probably the scariest level in, in the run, not because of its difficulty, but more so because there are spooky sandworms everywhere. Um, and so basically just jumping on the sand, uh, staying off the sand as much as possible is going to allow Yui to be able to continue to progress through, pick up some parts that are going to allow us to repair the shuttle and be able to escape this planet. Cool. Nicely done. Two side missions down. Okay. So coming up here is going to be tier one sour, which is one of the levels that's uh, changed as of as of late uh, or recently or no this is surprise excuse me surprise. go on surprise yeah <laughs> uh, surprise <laughs> um surprise is one of my favorite levels uh, for the run itself there's just beautiful jump chains uh, especially in this opening sequence and we see those spin glitches coming out from Yui to be able to maintain their speed nicely done uh, using force pull there actually ends up uh, bypassing a specific portion of the animation cooldown. So it allows us to be able to spin a little bit quicker, as well as putting away the lightsaber uh, to pull it back out. But nicely done, nailing Canyon Climb. Uh, there are just pixels on that wall that Yui was able to jump up. Very nicely done. Uh, but yeah, Yui just busting out a lot of like advanced tech here with being able to pry and uh, maintain that jump chain. Uh, yeah, the spin glitch is very, very nicely done. Uh, so here, this is, uh, used to be known as MST, which is called Make Surprise Terrible Again. Uh, what a name. Where, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I have time to explain it. Probably not. But basically, Yui just crouched there, and she was able to sneak her head into a trigger zone to be able to load uh, a droid here. Then doing an animation clip with a thermal detonators again to be able to push a blockade is going to cause the droid to move, and then we can end up spawning these last six enemies, which trigger the end of the mission. Nicely done. Yeah, and so there, as you saw as well, Yui's using an advanced force power known as Force Lightning. And so uh, Force Lightning just absolutely obliterates units. Like, people who play this game casually, probably who have done multiple playthroughs, just know how fun it is to just rush Force Lightning 3. And not only is it fun, but it also saves a good bit of time. Especially here, in this arena here, there's going to be a pack of two enemies there. Yui was able to get one, so just going to clear out that human with a couple of thermal detonators. And then lining up a shot, I think that looks good. Yeah. And then uh, killing this last enemy ends up opening the door and spawning the trigger to be able to continue on in the mission. And... <laughs> yeah, yes! Yes, reverse <laughs> uh, yeah. Nailed it. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, man. 
I'm so proud of you. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> How precise are some of these, uh, like jumps, where, where you have to like spin right at the precise moment, or is it pretty, pretty free? Yeah, you. Do you want to answer that one? Uh, I don't know how to answer. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> so. So there's a specific amount of time um, that it takes to be able to go through the spin to be able to uh, end up being able to mitigate VRGI. You have to start the spin animation. That's what okay. causes VRGI to disappear. Uh, so with when we only have medium style right now, it's very difficult because the swings take a while and we have to actually do two swings to be able to get a spin animation off. So with a slower saber and force jump one where we can only jump uh, like a very sh short distance upwards and maintain that height while we get the spins off. It's very, very difficult and very, very precise uh, to be able to land those consistently like you was doing. Imp impressive stuff. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. And so here, this is going to be an excellent level. This could be our first of two vehicle levels. And the vehicles in, in this game are just absolutely magnificent. So here, Yui's going to get through this cave and then pick up a second Tauntaun. And then we're going to do something a little bit special with that second Tauntaun. We're actually going to glitch it out a bit, uh, causing it to go into what we like to call the ice skater state. Uh, so here, Yui's going to take this Tauntaun speed boost with it to build a bunch of speed and then brief jump and turn with it to build even more speed, which is going to be something else we're going to do in a little bit as well. But going up this cliff, walking off, as you saw, and then just knocks Yui off, right? But it's not over yet. The Tauntaun now decelerates at a less rate, which means we are able to build a lot more speed with it. And so looking up this mound, there's a huge invisible wall, but just catapulting us, uh, us up, we're able to get over that invisible wall and skip about like half or a third of the, the entire level. Very nicely done. Very impressive to get that first try. That is not a, an easy trick. And you're just like nailing all these really difficult things in very few tries. Like rail was awesome, and then you got got Hoff two done really fast. Just very great stuff. Keep it up. And I'm actually just doing a little bit of shipper walking here, so to move the hallways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So basically, if we can't like straight jump in order to be able to build and maintain that speed, um, pressing A and D back and forth. You can see that number sort of like in the middle of the screen, that white number, and you'll notice it go up above 250 when she just presses A and D back and forth. Uh, and this is because whenever you add a straight key on, the game uh, actually ends up accelerating a little bit and then applying a deceleration back down to 250. But if we just continuously tap between A and D, that actually just allows us to continue walking at that faster rate. Uh, so just a very, very cool little uh, bit of an exploit here because it doesn't immediately decelerate you down to 250. Cool. But yeah, using Force Lightning here just to be able to get past these Stormtroopers. A lot of these Stormtroopers have very specific paths and very, very, very specific triggers. So like we just know how to go through these hallways consistently every single time. Uh, but up here, we're actually going to have our second lightsaber on lightsaber combat. Um, and Yui, are you going to do the Rage Strat? I'm going to do the Rage Strat. So what I did cool. was when I was in the fourth level, I believe. On Sour, yeah. I upgraded yep. Horse Rage, Dark Rage level one. So I'm going to activate it here in order to not get parried by Alora's lightsaber and do a little bit of saber pens. Finish her off. Yeah, so there you just saw Yui cut through the enemy and that's known as mitigating the parry value or getting around it. Uh, I would love to talk more about saber stuff, but this level is going to get Ridiculous. So activating Force Rage to stop us from going under one health, then putting the speeder bike into us uh, is going to allow us to knock us up the mountain second oh try. Are you gosh. kidding me? That is, <laughs> this is the run killer level, okay? This is tier, tier two trip. And so that is unbelievably precise and incredibly finicky and incredibly difficult. So getting that that fast is just so incredibly high. Oh my goodness, you're playing so well. This is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and so uh, start and the end of the level are right next to each other. So just getting us up on that mountain allows us to jump to the end. And so that's just exactly what Yui did. Uh, but here, tier two rogue, we have force jump level two, so we can jump for longer. And Yui just having that faster style now coming into the second tier of missions, is going to allow her to do spin glitch a lot more effectively. 
Uh, but there, just we had to jump around a giant invisible wall, and Yui made that look incredibly easy. Trust me, it is not. <laughs> it is. It is not. Especially at all. for the strat uh, I went for, because I used the yeah, pole instead yeah, of the so side of the side of the <laughs> bridge. Yeah. So you you is pulling out these jump chains that even top top level runners don't do because <laughs> they save like split seconds and they're just like a million times more difficult. So really nicely done. Um, but yeah, here we're on tier two deep red. We had our lightsaber and all of our other weapons uh, confiscated. So it's kind of funny that they make you do the menu management before to choose your armaments <laughs> and you just haven't taken away. But here we picked up like the second most basic weapon, an E11 blaster rifle, and it's going to we're, we're going to do a really cool manipulation with it. Um, but here Yui going for an incredibly difficult crouch climb gets it first try. Let's go. Let's go. That saves one second. Because <laughs> there's an elevator. Like, yeah, there's an elevator right next to it. So it's like you could take the elevator or you could do this incredibly precise crouch climb in order to build just enough height to be able to get up there. So it's wow. Just wow. Uh, but yeah, here there's going to be a boss at the very end who's going to have the most advanced weapon, uh, but we have basic force abilities known as force sense. So in the base game for casual players, the force sense allows you to sort of like see items, see secrets and stuff like that. But here as speedrunners, it also gives us 100% accuracy. So there's no spray now with the rapid fire of the E11 and we can just shoot the boss <laughs> right after entering the arena with the second most basic weapon in the entire game. <laughs> oh boy. All right, tier two Rancor. Let's go. So Rancor is a really cool level. Uh, this so in tier two, fun story. There actually used to be another mission that was faster than tier two Rancor, but with the work of runners like uh, like Jaden and Oem, and I think maybe Hotshot and a couple others, they actually discovered uh, like a like over twenty seconds of time save on Rancor collectively, and especially with the utiliz utilization of Spin Glitch to be able to mitigate VRGI, uh, which once again, if we jump from same elevation to same elevation, we lose 50% of our speed. But if we do the Spin Glitch animation, it allows us to maintain that speed. Uh, as Yui mind tricks the Rancor, so it just doesn't move for the rest of the mission. Uh, so very, very cool uh, community contributions. Like the entire community has put in a lot of work into the speed game collectively. Uh, but here also using thermal detonators again, once again, to sneak our hitbox into the wall and that's going to allow us to press a switch uh, mitigating like a significant amount of back cracking is probably one of the most significant finds uh on rank war to just free all of the prisoners in this one spot but here yui is going to start setting up for a really cool manipulation you saw her kill three of the prisoners earlier but the captain is still alive so what yui does is she skips a bit of dialogue there and then comes through uh oh no i uh, comes through and ends up killing these, this last grouping of enemies, and then oh, she's no. gonna go back and kill the captain. Ooh, yeah. So Yui cannot lose another single prisoner here uh, while this is going on. If she does, then she ends up losing the mission, all simply because uh, she ended up killing a, uh, a number of prisoners at the start of the mission. But there we go, we're able to get through. That's, that's good, that's good. Uh, but yeah, so if Yui had gotten sort of like locked into that and continued failing it over, she may have just had to restart the level. But yeah, they're killing the last prisoner as the fade out is happening on the dialogue. Uh, that is going to allow Yui to be able to uh, skip having to bring back that last grouping of prisoners. Um, oh, yes, uh, you got the ca captain in the back. Yeah, you did. OK, so there's one of one of the four prisoners, which is predetermined. Uh, it's the same prisoner of every single time uh, is called the captain. And the captain is the one that has to reach a certain point in order for us to be able to end the mission. And so she just had to force push them in there. But here is Vision 1. So shooting the flashes going to allow Yui to build a bunch of speed. And then we're going to continue through. Uh, so this is probably the most notorious level in the run for its difficulty. Um, yeah, you didn't get a super good. Um, I was like, where is the speaker? I fall. I was like, I think it fell through the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> Which can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that just happens. Uh, it's very, very rare. In fact, I've only seen that happen twice before on that one enemy. Uh, but that's OK. Um, so basically, uh, coming through this mission is going to have one of the biggest and most hyped jump chains, which is known as Suomi Skip, uh, which major shout outs to one runner, Sabasuka, who is the uh, original pioneer for this jump chain. So I'm just going to start stop talking and, and let you refocus and let you watch.
Almost. Wow, beautiful second try. That is so unreal. Oh no, and you're doing this. That's why I forgot you do this. <laughs> oh my so this goodness. is Majun skip. So if you had gone to Stuker, she would have been able to make this trick a million times easier. But she does this anyway. <laughs> because it's funny. That is it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I cannot believe you still do that. That is ridiculous. So yeah, so that is Bajun skip. It, it was actually a skip that we've known about for a very long time. But Yui uh, just skipped using a Stuker concussion rifle to push herself back uh, to make it easier. But uh, it is incredibly precise, the trick that she ended up doing because we only have so much uh, ability to be able to jump higher because uh, we only have force jump level two at this point. But after this mission and after one more mission, we're going to enter tier three and unlock force jump level three, which is going to be it, it's going to be a lot. We're going to be able to jump very, very high and for very long periods of time. But here on Vision 2, it's actually a really nice level. Uh, that skip there that we saw Yui do that really precise jump in the, in the water pump room uh, known as Bill Doc Torn skip. Thank you so much, Bill, though. Probably one of the most influential skips uh, in the entire speed run. Um, Oh, cool, you were trying to use lunge tech. Yeah. yeah, so lunging in air ends up stopping us uh, from ascending or descending. Uh, this is actually Sagi, one of Sagi's favorite uh, mechanics in the game that we just don't don't really use. But without the Stuker, uh, we can't push ourselves down. So Yui's just saving two seconds there with a lunge at a well-timed uh, spot. Uh, but yeah, Vajun 2 is a really relaxing level. There's really not too much that's, that's difficult in the level. Uh, it allows us, to, and same thing for Vajun 3, really not too many difficult things in Vajun 3 at all. Uh, it just, so it gives us like sort of a breather because like tier 2 and tier 1 are incredibly intense especially. And then it uh, gives us a breather before we go into tier 3, which is going to have some of the, the most hype and some of the most difficult jump chains in the entire run. Maybe before we get there, you would you mind telling us what got you interested in um, speedrunning Jedi Academy in, in the first place? So what got me interested was I actually played this game like casually when I was like very, very little. I was like, I think seven or six when I played Aww. this. It was on the original Xbox. Then I was like, hmm, I play this game a lot. But then what ended up happening was Oh, get out of here. What ended up happening was <laughs> I ended up picking up the multiplayer for PC and then I ran into like the, this one server and I just never looked back. <laughs> Aw, that's cool. I love it when uh, a runner is, is doing a game that is very nostalgic for them. So you're, you're doing great, Yui. Thank you. Yeah, amazing stuff. Like, this run has been going so well. You've been nailing so many difficult things. Like, it's been so impressive impressive to me, especially, to see. Cool. All right. So, Vajun 3, there's... Uh, I guess this is honestly the most difficult part of the mission, is this one saber enemy outside of the Rosh boss fight, where uh, they can just absolutely troll you. Because the AI in this game is actually very intricate and very detailed. But using force speed to slow down time just allows us to have a much easier fight. Uh, but coming in here, Yui is going to be taking down Rosh. And there we haven't talked about this, but Yui just ended up entering a cutscene. And doing so allows us to skip the entire fight. And all we have to do is take Rosh down once. And then that allows us to end the mission. Uh, but here, this is going to be another amazing mission. So I'm just going to let you focus. We're just going to go from the start all the way to the end. Beautiful, and taking the lower path too, which is a lot more difficult and a lot more precise for something like half a second of time save or something like that. Like it's very, very minimal. The move impressive. set is just so impressive. Yeah. So there, a really key factor is activating force protect, which mitigates 80% uh, of damage. Uh, so Yui ended up just using that a really specific time to be able to mitigate a bunch of fall damage. So ending the mission with 16 out of 100 health. Hey, Hevel, Hevel's probably one of the most in, like intricate and sort of detailed levels in the sense of uh, 
force management. So in the bottom right hand corner, once again, is the force meter. And we have to jump all the way to the top of the tower. So your force only regenerates at a specific rate as she goes into a really difficult jump. Beautiful, very nicely done. Um, and so in order to be able to force jump, we need force, right? So like, if you don't have force, you can't use force jump. So you even just with very, 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 very precise jump heights at each and every single jump allowed her to be able to continue to progress through the mission. Whereas if she had over jumped in a lot of the jumps, especially at the beginning, then she would have had to wait for force to regenerate for her to be able to progress. Uh, but yeah, very nicely done. And nailing the difficult jump first try as well is super hype. Ooh, all right, that is Hubble. Oh, this. Yeah, so two more side missions to go in Tier 3 before we're going to get into the last four story missions of the run. Uh, but here, this, this is actually very sort of similar to what you might see in an, a Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast speedrun, where it's this very low ceiling, packed hallways with a ton of enemies. Uh, and so Academy mostly is like sort of an outdoors game, like very, very uh, sort of open areas allowing us to to do uh, creative jump chains and stuff like this, where this BIS in particular is just very, very close and narrow. But here, after Yui activates the tractor beam and hits a trigger right around here, uh, she is going to spawn TIE Fighters that she has to end up taking down. So what she's going to do is actually use Spin Glitch especially to be able to move through this very flat level at a very, very fast pace. And this is very important that she is trying to hit a specific cycle on these uh, TIE Fighters at the top of this elevator here. And, I and so if she does this, the TIE... I forgot to mind check oh, the okay. trooper. Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Yui is going to have, get, get a rocket in the face when she goes back down that elevator towards the end of the mission. Uh, but here, coming over to the side console, shoutouts to Dr. Meowington. We used to go to a different console, which is later on. But Yui, using Spin Glitch as well as the Stuker to go through really fast, is able to hit these TIE Fighters at a specific cycle. Very, very well done. I cannot express that. There were so many moving parts there, and she had to nail a lot of really intense and difficult movement to just be able to hit that specific cycle. Very, very well done. Oh, Rocket Trooper is nice. But yeah, just killing that list of enemies is going to allow us to end the mission and go into probably the coolest mission uh, for Spin Glitch and Crouch Boost users. Uh, this is definitely, I know from Sajiki, who is a, a veteran runner of this game as well, he loves this level uh, with Spin Glitch. And so Yui is going to show off a lot of really difficult and really intricate continuations through doorways and stuff. Like You have to land like in a very, very specific set of pixels to be able to get a lot of these continuations through. But basically, the gist is Boba Fett is like smuggling a bunch of weapons and stuff, and so we're going to end up blowing up all of them because uh, blowing up weapons is good, kids. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear it on, on Time Capsule. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so basically there's going to be three bombs in each area, so Yui just took care of the, the first grouping of three bombs, and then there's going to be three more to set. Uh, oh, it's so close. That's the most difficult doorway continuation there. That was really, really close, but this one's also really tough. Well, okay, just setting up for another jump chain here. Nice elevation boosts there. Cool, cool. Okay, so setting up another chain here is going to bring us to the furthest bomb, just because like we have a ton of speed, right? And so... It makes the most sense to go for the furthest bomb when you have like a ton of speed, uh, as opposed to like starting a new chain from one of the previous bombs in order to get down there. So nice order optimization there from Yui. Just gonna plant this one, have one more bomb. And you may have noticed that we actually entered the cutscene at the start of the mission. And it's all because Boba Fett, if we don't skip that cutscene and we go through really fast, he's just in a doorway every single time and it blocks you from being able to do it. But here, Yui is going to uh, conserve her force here because she's going to be spending all of it in order to be able to jump up to where Boba Fett's going to spawn because we have to end up taking him down uh, in order to end the mission. Oh, oh Rocket! No. <laughs> come down, come down here! <laughs> Oh yeah, my so goodness, if that happens, oh, oh, Boba Fett, come on. <laughs> Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. Whew. Deep breaths. <laughs> oh man. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so here we're now on the last grouping of four story missions before we're going to be closing out this run. Just such an awesome performance so far, you just very impressive stuff to see. Uh, this is actually the longest level casually, but it's probably the shortest one in the speed run, uh, which is known as uh, uh, Vision 1, yeah, I already said the name. So here, Yui just using uh, force in order to be able to jump really high allows us to bypass like pretty much everything and then just jump to the end of the mission. Uh, and that climb there is known as the T-Mac G. Uh, the shout outs to the greatest Sp Spider-Man of all time. <laughs> uh, here's Casper 2, which is probably one of the scariest levels when you're on PV pace, because like your like, hands are shaking, you're really nervous, and there's a lot of really precise uh, movement elements in the mission that can go go wrong for various reasons. Uh, so here, uh, Saki is showing off the Hecky Gan chain, nicely done. Just jumping over a cutscene trigger there and then landing on one of those side pedals. And then here, jumping past that saber enemy at a very specific rate allows us to sort of uh, manipulate his his AI in a, in a certain way so he doesn't troll us. Uh, then coming up here, we're going to be going for the Thunder Thighs cycle, which is uh, very specific. So here at the bottom of the elevator, we actually hit a trigger to start sort of a cycle in a further room with an instant kill of death. Uh, sort of plane that can spawn, uh, which we call Thunder Thighs. And so here, jumping through at a very specific rate, Yui is going to be able to catch the cycle perfectly. And she nailed all of that movement. And so, yep, here it is. There's Thunder Thighs. Goodbye. And we are able to get through. Very nicely done. And now you do the light side, right? Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, this, so this is how bonkers Yui is and how impressive she is, especially as a newer runner, is that she's going to be taking the much harder boss fight and much more precise. So here, uh, with 50 Force, Yui is going to try and activate Force Speed uh, within about a 0.2 to a 0.5 second timing. Oh no, you're doing Grip Strats! <laughs> yes, Grip Strats! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you did grip strats. Oh, My that's so funny. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. So she's thinking a much easier and a much cooler fight. <laughs> uh, so there, uh, this is a discovery by me. So if you have force grip level two and you grip her and she pushes you away, then what happens is it actually locks her AI state. Uh, after she pushes you away, she just stands there. So you can just go and go up and kill her after she pushes you away. Uh, and this works on every single boss, except for the final one. Every single one. Uh, but here, this is going to be... How do you even explain this trick? Throwing the lightsaber underneath, we're going to try and break two pillars by deactivating our lightsaber mid-throw as it's going towards them. Uh, and this is known as Vrindor. And so, it doesn't look like much, but this is probably the most difficult trick in the entire game. And it only saves about 20 seconds. Yep. So there are the specific moves that Saki's doing. She's walking in specific spots. She's turning around at a very specific timing. And then she is also deactivating the lightsaber at a specific timing. So there's actually three incredibly precise timings that come into the trick overall. And so you have to nail every single one. Ah, there we go. Nicely done. All right, core two. This level is going to go really, really fast. So get ready on time. It's going to be coming up in about, I want to say like 20, 30 seconds or so, uh, depending on how how badly uh, Tavion trolls. Uh, but nicely done, jumping to the very end of the mission like immediately. And then we are going to be coming down using spins to uh, try and maintain speed in order to go through. And Yui is also being very, very uh, cognizant of her force as well to just make sure that she has uh, enough force to be able to activate force speed twice. Hey, okay, get ready on time. And time. Oh my gosh, GG. GG. Yo, GG. <laughs> gosh, Yui. I want to know, like, okay, so everything in this run that you just showed us looks really difficult. And I'm kind of curious what you think was like the hardest thing to overcome when you were learning Jedi Academy. Um being nervous about those hard jumps. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what but mostly gets to... me down when I'm doing like TV runs or marathon runs in general. 
trying to like keep a good attitude yeah. when something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Aw. Well, you're you're definitely doing amazing and, and you'll be getting more practice the more you do it. And I know we're all very excited to see um, you run this again, which will be in Frame Fatales. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. And I looked it up for all of you. It looks like Yui's run of Jedi Knight Jedi Academy will be happening Thursday, March 2nd. So be on the lookout in March. Um, do you have any shout outs or comments that either of you would like to uh, say before we move to the next run tonight? I have ever hoped you have become a true Jedi. Thank you. Thank you uh, to yeah. smooth operative <laughs> for having me <laughs> and having Muffin too. Of course. And thank you to Muffin yes. for helping me with commentary. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, yeah, I've Muffin. had Muffin here before, but it was a pleasure yeah. to meet you, Yui, and um, I, I'd be happy to have both of you back anytime. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Uh, just a few really quick shout yeah, outs, major shout outs to the community. The community is so welcoming and so helpful. So if you're interested in trying out the speed run, like we have beginners, amazing beginners resources. Uh, just go to speedrun.com slash JKA and go to the guide section and watch Tajiki's beginners tutorial. It's in, in all honesty, like I think it's one of the best beginners tutorials that I've, I've ever seen, uh, period. So definitely try this out. Don't hesitate. And yeah, Yui, good luck in March. I'm really excited to see you run this game again. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, um, thank you both again. Uh, we are about to break real quick, but before we do, I just want to give a, a huge shout out to all of our supporters, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bits cheered here on the GDQ Twitch channel. Do help support games done quick, both with Hotfix uh, and with AGDQ 2023 costs, including uh, the most unfortunate hotel cancellation costs. But um, please consider subscribing if you do enjoy your daily dose of GDQ. Uh, and if you'd like to follow everything GDQ, you can use the command exclamation mark links in the Twitch chat for, for access. But we will be right back with Futurama, so stay tuned. All right, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Welcome back to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hotfix. It is the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games that were released in the same year. Um, tonight we're doing the year 2003, and we are all set up for our next run of Futurama. So please welcome Stylonide. Hey, yes, I'm Stylonide or Dan. It's a little less of a mouthful. And uh, yeah, this is Futurama <laughs> uh, for the Xbox. Uh, so just a bit of prelude. This was made in 2003, obviously, by a Swedish company called Unique Development Studios, which is ironically not that unique of a name. But um, <laughs> this was part of like a big bid for Swedish game development at the time where they secured a lot of licenses. And um, unfortunately, this game kind of got rushed out the door. So it turned out a little busted, but it's a fun speed run. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. and. Um, Delve into the new New York. So uh, on go. Right on. Oh, wait, hang on. We got an FMV. <laughs> <laughs> Love when that happens. All right, on go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> so Futurama uh, was sort of like a platformer hybrid game that came out on the Xbox and PS2 back in the day, uh, and you play as technically four characters from the show. You play as Fry, Bender, and Leela, and then for one level you get to play as Zoidberg. So you're going to see a lot of variety in the run. Uh, there's a lot of different tech between characters that we're going to see. Um, but we start off as Fry, and we're in Planet Express, and we're just collecting items uh, for the Professor, which he's done purely to get us out of his metaphorical hair. He just wants Fry to go away. Um, so we're just running around and trying to collect our items as quickly as we can so we can proceed the story. And the story of this game, it's actually quite interesting. So back in the day, a bit of show history for you, this was considered the lost uh, 73rd episode because this came out just after the first cancellation. Uh, this show has a really good track record for cancellations. I think it's on like three or four now. Um, That's wild, actually. I'm yeah. excited to hear this. Yeah, so um, this was treated as like an extra lost episode if you stitch the cutscenes together. And you can um, it's up on YouTube, and you can also watch it on the DVD extras for the second movie. Um, but the premise is basically there's this evil billionaire called Mum in the show, and she's just bought Planet Express. The professor's allowed her to, to buy um, ownership, and she now owns 51% of Earth, so she's just immediately gone full bore. Everyone is her slaves now. There's a curfew. There's, like, evil robots patrolling the streets, and we just don't really like that, so we want to go and stop Boo. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's Planet Express. 
And uh, we're going to send Fry down through New York. Uh, basically, the ship, as you can see, is pretty pretty wanged up, as they say in the cutscene. So we're going out to get a new, I think it's like an engine or like a uh, warp drive so that we can take off from Earth. So this is the sewers, and sewers is where we're going to start seeing some actual sort of crazy tech and out of bounds in this game. And there's a lot of um, out of bounds and sort of going through geometry in Futurama. So Fry has very little character movements. What we're relying on is just quirks in how these maps work and how they load. So Futurama was developed on the uh, the Gamebryo engine, which Fallout 3 and New Vegas use. And if you know how those games can be, then there's, there's jank there and there's jank here. So one of the first things we're going to do is the map will load and unload chunks at a time when we hit certain triggers. Triggers are a big thing in this game. So that door that shut on us where that checkpoint is, we're not really meant to be able to get back through because the level back here is unloaded. But we can jump around out of bounds and just go ahead and uh, we're on the ceiling now. and <laughs> completely ignoring everything around us. And this was a big deal because sewers back in the day, um, I'll shout out the person who actually found this. This was found by Toxic Pinhead, which if I name every trick, pinhead finds, I wouldn't have any time for commentary. Um, but they are an absolute pillar of this uh, this game, so shoutouts to them. Um, this level is very heavily cycle-based, and there are a lot of areas where you're locked into rooms, like the one below me right now, where you would have to fight a lot of enemies before you can proceed. So being able to skip all of this just means we get to keep all our health, we get to keep all our ammo, and we get to save all the time. Um, so it's very nice, really good discovery. So then we pop back in bounds here, because unfortunately there's no way to out of bounds for the rest of the level. And now we're just going to do the drainage tower. So there's very minor fry tech here. We're really scrambling for any tech with fry. So there's ladder hops, which you just saw. We can skip a short climb animation. Um, these save like just over half a second to pop. Okay, we got both. Nice. Um, missing those can be bad if you fall. Uh, speaking of falling, we now have ladder drop, <laughs> which I'm going to try to get. Okay, not quite. That one's a lot tougher. But that does allow me to show you, so as you saw, when you take fall damage as Fry, uh, he sits still for a moment, you lose quite a bit of health, um, it just kind of kills your momentum. So ladder drop would have let me, if I landed it, get straight onto that ladder and uh, continue. And managing health, as you can see, is really important in sewers because we want to damage abuse on that goo at the bottom, so we're not taking time jumping across uh, all these little gaps. So we're going to finish on just a little pip of health and run through to the end. And that's sewers, that's a, that's a big one. <laughs> All right. So coming up, we have Subway. And Subway is pretty much the total opposite of Sewers. You're just going to see a lot of bread and butter movement with Fry. So I can talk about a very different element of playing as him. Um, Fry has these like pseudo third person shooter controls. Uh, and he has a lock on attack. And the way this lock on works is really strange. So if you've played any FPS or any third person shooter, um, you're usually pointing the camera at what you want to shoot. So it'll be generally whatever's at the center of the screen. But Fry's lock-on is based on where he's facing, not where your camera's facing. So one of the basic things you do in this level, and it's a really good skill to get up if you're um, looking to run the game, is learning how to point Fry and then use the trigger to just like cut corners and turn him really quickly. It's really odd, but uh, just one of those little fundamental skills, and it's just everywhere in this level. Um, another thing I'm doing, the enemy behavior is super consistent. There's not really much RNG in terms of how these characters, uh, in terms of how these NPCs will attack you. So I'm sort of running in certain ways so that they either ignore me or they shoot me in a pattern that I can predict. So I end up looking like Neo, just dodging bullets constantly, and it's uh, very cool. So we've also just picked up the shotgun. Oh, sorry, go, go right ahead if you've got a question. <laughs> Okay, honestly, I was just going to say that that's the crossover cosplay I want to see. Fry is Neo. <laughs> oh, I reckon there's, there's definitely fan art of that sort of thing. I feel like back in the uh, mid-2000s, that was like all the rage. I think I had like a South Park Matrix wallpaper at some point when I was like 11. Oh my god, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we got the shotgun, and the shotgun's really great because more damage, and um, every weapon has a charge function. There's just, there's so much little things here. So every weapon has a charge, and depending on how long you charge the weapon, you'll get sort of different properties. Uh, so with the pistol, it's pretty normal, like you just get a bit more damage, and you kind of just want to charge it for as long as you can. But with the shotgun, we can hold quite a short charge, and we can kill most enemies in the game with no trouble. So it's really handy. Um, there'll be another gun uh, in the level after this, and that's my favorite one, so I'm very keen to show that one off. But that's going to be our best friend. Uh, so up here, we're going to just casually jump out of bounds. 
And you might be wondering why I've switched to the hammer for that, because I always forget how much there is to explain in Fright. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> so each weapon has their own physical hitbox. So if we're going up against a wall and we have the shotgun out, uh, the shotgun pokes really far forward. So it actually makes it harder to squeeze into those spaces like when I jumped up against that door. We're going to be doing the same thing here with the hammer out. So jump up through this building and get out of bounds. Awesome, we did it. And get the shotgun out. Another thing with triggers, uh, there is a trigger here that spawns enemies. We also need to hit one that loads the rest of the level, so I'm going to try to skip the enemies. No, I spawn them. That's okay. So there's a little visual cue on that little arrow on the floor that I use. So uh, ideally, I would have skipped pretty much all of these spawns. Only a couple of guys would have spawned and would have conserved a lot of ammo. But uh, either way, it's not a big deal. I think you lose like one second if the enemies spawn. It's not too bad. So here's that sort of half charge of the shotgun on full display. You can sort of, there's a bit of an audio cue where the gun sort of whirs up, but it's fairly quiet. It's not mixed very well. <laughs> so over here, there's a couple of enemies that we need to get rid of before the rest of the level will open the way. So I'm just going to take them out and head over to the door and go straight on through. Awesome. There's a lot that can go wrong there. There's actually a trigger you can hit there that uh, we call it the soft lock pig. It's not really a soft lock, but it loses so much time. Like, you might as well just reset. Um, but thankfully, <laughs> very easily avoided, so no soft lock pig for us. But yeah, the last sort of stretch of this level is pretty self explanatory. We're using that lock on and pointing fry towards these buttons to stop the fans nice and quickly. And then we're just running past most of these enemies. I might even show off and go like pacifist because you can actually manipulate these rockets. See if I can do it. Yeah, there we go. So he shot at me, but it hit the hit the wall. <laughs> but yeah, so another hectic fry level. Lots of manipulating of level geometry and structure to kind of get where we need to go. And really importantly, making sure that we are hitting the triggers we want to hit. So the ones that load the level and not hitting the ones we don't. So the ones that spawn enemies. So I actually have a question. You said Fry level. Does that imply that we will be seeing other characters throughout this yes. playthrough? Yep. Awesome. So next up, there'll be Bender. And then we have a little break. Oh, no, sorry. Then we have Leela. And then a little break with Zoidberg. And then we sort of have like a uh, uh, an encore round with one of each character again. Right on. Yeah. So this is Red Light District. And this is, uh, this is Martini Hop. There you go. That's Martini Hop. So when that's tilted one way, we can stand on that <laughs> and just dodge everything on the ground here. So the intended route, we'd go all the way along the floor and we'd have to fight a lot of robots, uh, risk taking a lot of damage, uh, etc. Just not very good. But uh, by using that little bit of geometry, we can skip all of it and go straight here. And uh, thankfully, the rest of the level actually still loads when we do this, <laughs> which is great. So this is also the Tommy Gun, which is my favorite weapon in the game. So the duration of the charge shot doesn't actually determine your damage. It determines how many bullets uh, Fry will fire of, like, a higher caliber. So realistically, you don't actually want to do a full charge most of the time. You want to do, like, a partial charge, and then you can cancel it with a weapon switch or doing a regular shot. So there's a little bit of tech there. Um, the other thing you saw me do there, you can lock on to an enemy and then quickly snap to another direction and hit lock on. And the bullets will go straight to um, the next enemy, so you can sort of carry that charge, be a little more economical with your, uh, your ammo. So this is Uptown, and Uptown has another ridiculous skip. Uh, this split is just called Please Don't Kill Trash Can, because that trash can is essential. <laughs> um, so that's why we take out some of those enemies at the beginning, because their shots can track and hit that trash can. And then that's pretty much the whole level skipped. We literally just have to do this closing shootout, and then we are out of Fry, which is uh, pretty great. Fry's going fairly well. So again, just sort of pointing Fry where we want him to be, and just letting go of uh, lock-on and re-locking, and just, and just spamming A. <laughs> that's the easy part. And now we have the Chicken Walker. So the Chicken Walker, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's quite boring. This is like a five-minute semi-auto-scroller, so... Now's a great time if uh, Chad has any questions or anything, or if there's any trivia you want to ask Tippy, um, go for it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, um, if you do have a question uh, for Dan, please uh, go ahead and post it in the chat, and I will do my best to relay that information. Uh, but for now, I'm curious, you know, what got you into speedrunning Futurama? 
a lot of people didn't even know this game existed. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's very niche. Um, So I've always been a massive fan of the show. Like, I think I'm speaking for a lot of people when I say, like, Matt Groening series are a big part of the childhoods of, like, people my age, whether it's, like, Simpsons or Futurama. Um, And I was always just a little more into, like, the sci-fi and the setting of um, this series. So naturally, as an obsessive kid, I looked up everything (laughs) to do with the game, um, or to do with the series, I should say, and I found the game. Um, But I didn't actually own a PS2 when I was younger. I I played mostly on, like, PS1 and PC. Uh, Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I didn't have this game. I just, it's one of those games that lived, like, rent-free, and I was wondering, like, how cool it would be to run around in, uh, in the world of Futurama. Uh, And then I got to get a PS2 in like 2010 and got this game and it was not very good. Um, But I was driven to play (laughs) it because... Yeah, they tried. I mean, it it doesn't help that the PS2 version is like very clearly the inferior one. Like it's super laggy. It's the analog controls feel worse. It's just it's all over the place. Um, But I still played through it because I just loved the series too much. And then... uh, got into speedrunning and I did a few games and then I sort of had a bit of a break and I thought, oh, well, you know, what's a, what's kind of like a bucket list game? And I thought, oh, well, what's the Futurama run like? Like, not many people do it. And um, looked it up and I was like, oh, why not? And then I just got addicted and um, kept playing the game. <laughs> and uh, it's been do you a, have, a lot of fun. Do you have like a lot of uh, support in the community for this game or were you figuring out a lot of things on your own? Oh, tons of, yeah, tons of support. Like, it's a small community, but the people that do run this game and do play it are extremely passionate. Um, like, I guess if I could shout out a current runner, Dot U has been just, like, finding all these really smart little optimizations in levels. And I still need to implement quite a few of them, but they've just been, like, <laughs> getting all these untied level records on the boards, and it's just great to see. Um, oh, yeah. Friendly yeah. competition is always nice for a game you like. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, of course... Uh, Toxic Pinhead was another really good, like, strat hunter, and they used to run the game fairly regularly, but they're, they're like, a licensed game champion. Like, I think they have records in, like, Family Guy and maybe some of the Simpsons games as well. Um, They're just a monster at licensed games. I don't know how they do it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So then, um, with Futurama being, like, you know, the sci-fi, because I agree with you, I I think Futurama was probably my my most watched and most loved uh, show um, with uh, Matt Groening, but I also am curious, and I think Chat's curious, who your favorite character is. See, that's in, tough in because I feel like the cast is <laughs> so strong. Um, I feel like for just pure entertainment value, like you can't go past Bender or Zoidberg. Like they're just too good. <laughs> <laughs> like they are just consistently funny and interesting. Um, but then I uh, like I like Fry because he's got such like a strong character. Like all the emotional episodes that center around him are really well done. But, yeah. I think it's really easy to relate to to Fry on some level. He's like the the audience surrogate. I feel like a lot of times, but um, definitely I'm, now I'm kind of curious about Chat. D- who's your favorite Futurama character? Um, I think mine might be Leela because nice. I just love Katie Seagal. I think her her VO is fantastic for Leela, and she's just such a badass. Yeah, um, I was actually that was sort of when I was getting into like learning about voice actors as a kid. I was really impressed because she didn't have as much of a pedigree as like Billy West or John DiMaggio, and she. She just kills it, like, in the role. She's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's fantastic. Um, we had some questions from chat. I don't know um, if if you'll remember specific lines from the show, but do you, do you have a best one-liner? Oh, yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a harsh one, but it's so brutal. Uh, there's the episode Bender shouldn't be allowed on TV. Um, <laughs> and he says a lot of questionable things. And this is, this is one of the He says... Um, he starts off really heartfelt. He's like, have you ever thought of turning off the TV, sitting down with your children, and then he just kills and he goes, hitting them? <laughs> and everyone's just like oh completely God. dumbfounded by what he said. And it's just such a funny moment. Um, oh my goodness. Just about anything the professor says as well is just gold. <laughs> oh yeah, that, definitely. Another question in chat that I don't know if it's serious or not, is One Piece real? Is, yes, it is real. <laughs> Okay. The if that's answer. from Joseph Fumi, that's because he, he's gotten me onto reading. I read through all of JoJo's with him, and now I'm reading One Piece. So. Oh, fantastic! That's fantastic. So that's been um, fun. 
But yeah, so so talk us through through the game right now. We're still kind of in the auto scroller. Yeah, so there was a good question that I actually spotted, which was this is a semi auto scroller, and I'm, I apologize for not really covering that earlier. So basically, oh, as you yeah. can see, the walker will stop. Uh, periodically, and we basically need to kill all the enemies as quickly as we can. Um, so that's where those rockets that I was using come into play. They're really good for like splash damage. So it's all about managing your ammo and aiming them so that you get the most coverage. Um, so that's uh, pretty much how that auto scroller works. And then the rest of it is just waiting, and I just sort of mess around and shoot things. So I, I get the nibblers if I'm really bored. Um, so yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> nice. And we go straight into Bender. And immediately we have tech, we can double jump, we can climb slopes and get out of bounds right away. Um, so this is where the game gets a little more interesting in terms of the movement. So we've just skipped an entire opening platforming section by doing that. Um, and what else is there? There's a full timer, which if anyone knows how some games work, a full timer basically works where the game, when you're in a falling state, will calculate how long you've been falling. So maybe you've fallen for one second and that equals 20 points of damage or something like that. And that's how Bender works in this game. Uh, but what we can do with Bender is, if we don't jump off a ledge, we can perform an action as we're falling that can be done on the ground. Like, your falling state is kind of like your grounded state. Um, so if I do a little spin with my arms, or I do a little charge, that actually delays that fall timer from starting. So it means that I don't have to take damage, and when you take damage, you, you know, sort of stumble over and sit still for a bit. So it's, it just keeps you moving, which is uh, really nice. So if you see me doing uh, spins as I fall, that's pretty much what that is. Um, what else is there with Bender? There's a lot of uh, weird level geometry like with Fry, but because we have abilities like our double jump, we can sort of climb up slopes and get into like little spots we really shouldn't be able to uh, because his hitbox is changing midair. And that's another thing that'll be big in uh, Layla, is changing your character's hitbox. Um, there's also just some precise tricks you can do with Bender that just aren't really possible with Fry because he just doesn't, you know, poor guy doesn't have many moves. So I'm going to do here, hopefully I land this. Ah, that's unfortunate. So we can fall straight down from there onto that little uh, kudzu thingo, but unfortunately it's a bit of a finicky drop. Weasel Canyon, uh, speaking just in the context of the, uh, the full run, the level I'm doing right now, is a very, very brutal level if you're playing at uh, top level because, as you can see, uh, that death right there probably lost me maybe like 10, 15 seconds. Not a big deal uh, in a showcase or a marathon setting because you just keep going. Uh, but if you're doing a run, that's you know that can be GG, <laughs> and you're just fighting to get your time back if something like that happens. And this level is full of opportunities to make those sorts of mistakes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of a scary one. Uh, but thankfully, there's a lot of movement with Bender we can do and a lot of backup strats that we can resort to if necessary. Um, so I'm also going to try here. I'm, even despite that death, I'm going to continue to be gutsy. There we go, we got it. So you can stand on a lot of stuff you're not meant to. Pretty much everything in this game has collision. If it's like a wall that's meant to stop you, and they've got like little things jutting out on it, chances are you might be able to actually stand on that and use that to boost yourself. Now there's a strat here that's like not really RTA viable, but I'm going to shout it out. You can do a really weird slide on that pile of rocks there and actually get pressed up into the ceiling, but it's... It's so easy to have it go wrong. I've had attempts where he actually slides like straight into the wall and gets pinched out of bounds and falls to his death, and that sends you back like 15, 20 seconds. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that one be. Something else I do is sliding into cutscene triggers sometimes, like I did there. And that's pretty much as easy as it sounds. You're just hitting that before you go across the trigger, and that way you're moving uh, while a cutscene plays for a couple seconds. Um, so yeah. Now, do you find it easier to control like certain characters, like like Bender versus Fry, for instance? Yeah, I think part of it is the character, and part of it is like the levels that I'm playing. Um, okay. So like some of the geometry is really jank and weird, um, so, and Fry has quite a lot of that. Whereas Bender has more forgiving geometry, but he has like more advanced like movement he demands of you. Um, okay. More on that first person thing I did in a moment, by the way. I just realized I haven't <laughs> sure, explained yeah. that. That's a, that's a teaser. <laughs> You're going to be seeing a lot of that moving forward. Um, but yeah, I, I think Bender generally is like higher higher skill floor, but a higher skill ceiling. Um, and then I'd say, oh, sorry, a lower skill floor and a higher skill ceiling. Uh, he's probably the easiest to get into in terms of like learning how to use his abilities or his techniques. Um, Fry is kind of like middle of the road. 
I'd say like higher skill floor and sort of a medium skill ceiling. And then Leela is probably medium skill floor and the absolute highest skill ceiling in the game because she's just got the most tech. Pardon me, with like the opportunity for precision and um, just effective timing. Uh, she's really hectic at a high level. Um, but yeah, like there's, there's good diversity across all the characters, I think, um, in terms of entry points. Cool. Yeah. So this is another <laughs> sort of, again, it's a sort of auto-scroller because I still have to move Bender. Um, but it's pretty easy. As you can see, the boulder is already well off screen. <laughs> um, but now's a good opportunity to talk about what I was doing with that slide into first person uh, technique. So what goes on in this game, and it's very jank and very weird, and I'm going to sound completely insane as I describe it. Uh, when we start a slide and we enter first person, so... Uh, let me walk that back, actually. When we slide, we can't control Bender. So it's not like Crash Bandicoot, where you can sort of, like, move Crash after you start the slide. Bender will always go in a straight line. Uh, and Leela has a similar move with a roll. Same idea. Um, so the game is basically going, hey, we're going to move you a certain distance forward. So, like, I don't know what the distance is calculated as, but let's say, like, 10 units. Uh, and the game will always move you in that direction. But if you go into first person and then move your angle like 30 to 45 degrees and then release before the slide ends, the game's like, oh, you're facing this way. We'll zip you 10 units the way you're facing now. So we're basically tricking the game into zipping us past things. So that's how we go through doors. It's how we get out of bounds. The game is just like, oh, yep, you need to go this way. So I'll send you this way. And it's, uh, yeah, it's completely unhinged. <laughs> but is, we it tough to, is it tough to execute? Uh, I'd say it's one of the harder tricks in the game, yeah, just because once you get it, it's not too bad. Like, as you can see, like, it's not too bad for me. There's a, there's a couple of angles for specific doors and walls that are a bit weird, because it's not always a consistent 30 or 45. You kind of need to picture right. what's, what's past the door. And um, there's an angled door in Leela that's, like, really annoying when you're on PV pace. <laughs> um, we'll get there, I, I imagine. <laughs> yes. Uh, but once you learn the general principle of it, it's pretty easy to implement. Um, the part where it gets really tricky, and we haven't actually started implementing this into RTA runs, but you can do like frame-perfect releases from a redirect. Uh, that's what we call it. It's a redirected slide and redirected roll. So we just shorten it to redirect. Um, but yeah, what you can do is end it on the same frame, the slide or the roll ends, and you will just fly super far forward. Also, we're abusing geometry once again here. <laughs> we're just straight out of bounds and skipped a huge oh. amount of platforming there. <laughs> Remix. Um, yeah, so, sorry, that was a poor mine facility. That's like my favorite level from back in the day. Me and uh, Liquid Wi-Fi used to grind ILs of it constantly. Um, really cool level, but it's mostly a bread and butter display of everything we've put together in Bender so far. Um, and some of the stuff you see in Fry, like abusing geometry to get out of bounds. Um, but yeah, so the redirect is definitely up there in terms of like high skill sort of moves. Um, and just to sort of give an idea of how big of a deal the redirect was, uh, when Toxic Pinhead, shout outs once again, uh, first found it, he sort of messaged me in my chat. He's like, oh, this one door in Bender is kind of weird. I can sort of go through it if I do this. I was like, oh, that's cool. That saves a few seconds. And I thought, hang on, have you tried it on other doors? And he's like, oh, I haven't done that yet. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, it's still death. And I thought, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll just start doing it on all the doors in Bender, and then literally minutes fell off of the run immediately by doing that. And then I thought, well, Leela has this roll. I wonder if that works the same way, and then it works the same way. And then, so I think in the course of, like, a couple of days of, like, routing it in and optimizing it, uh, I think, like, eight minutes was cut from the run. Um, just a huge amount of time. Oh, wow, that is huge. Yeah. So we're thinking of, um, there's sort of a sentiment, hang on, I'm going to take a back up here. There's a sentiment among runners of like implementing a classic mode, uh, just because the redirect changed how the game is played so fundamentally. You can see there how unforgiving the game can be. I made a couple of little mistakes there, unfortunate. Um, that's something you've really got to watch out for. Definitely intended. Definitely me demonstrating the checkpoint system. It's all, all part of the, the show, <laughs> everyone. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, all part of the showcase. <laughs> Um, so yeah, getting, uh, like I died there twice, and so in a run, that's, that's just, that's it, at the level that I play at. Um, so it's a very, it can be quite a strenuous game, just on that alone, 
because that one mistake can cost you your run. Um, but anyways, we're past the hardest jump ever made, <laughs> apparently. Now we're inside this uh, fun little reference to Alien. Kind of looks like the ship from the first movie. But yeah, so Bender's tech is pretty much largely explained by this point. There's, it's always a fun game to explain because there's just so much to talk about and you sound like a complete mad scientist the entire time, but it's very satisfying getting to put it, uh, put it all together in these levels. So once again, we're going to abuse the full timer here. Just do some spins. And that sort of cuts out a lot of intended platforming. Okay, Dan, I have a question for you in chat. Really, really <laughs> wants to know if you are having a good day. I'm having a great day. It's a bit hot, but it's a good day. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. I hope chat's having a good day too. <laughs> so this is the junkyard. And again, the junkyard, we're going to be seeing a lot of that skill usage put together. But I just want to draw attention to this jump because this jump is terrifying. Uh, it's more precise than it looks. Okay, we got it. <laughs> When it goes right, it's it's like that. That's actually, you know what, that's probably my number one quote. Uh, if anyone's seen Godfellas from season three, uh, if you've done something right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of this run. Like, when I do something right, it's like, oh, yeah, that, that, yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, speedrunner is going fast, but, like, some of the stuff you do, some of the jumps are just, like, absolutely nerve-wracking. Um, it's so funny because someone brought that episode up uh, earlier. They they were like, "What's the runner's favorite episode?" Mine's oh, a that's a great <laughs> pick. <that> was one. <laughs> yeah, I think if you're picking a Ken Keeler episode, like you're already picking a very high tier episode of Futurama. Like he consistently puts out really banger episodes. Um, recently, it's it's always kind of shifting around. My favorite movie is Bender's Big Score, and I do think that is like just a great episode overall. Uh, and my recent favorite that I kind of rotated around to was um, The Why of Fry. It's not as comedic, but it's a very, like, story-based episode. And it's sort of, uh, I guess, like, spoilers for a 20-year-old episode. But it's all about, like, how Fry actually got frozen. And, like, it's, it involves the brains and it involves Nibbler. And it's just, like, a really fun episode. Just a big lore dump for the fans. Um, oh, yeah. Love a good uh, lore episode. <laughs> yeah. So that one's really fun. Um I think in terms of, like, there's always the big three uh, emotional episodes, which is Luck of the Fryrish, Jurassic Park, and um, Game of Tones. And I think of the three, I think the one that made me cry the hardest when I was a kid was Jurassic Park. Like, that one upset me so much. I think I was, like, nine years Aww. old, saw it on TV. Great episode, though. It, it's, it ends on a really... <laughs> if you go back and watch it, the way they frame the ending of the episode is, like, a really dark joke. Um about Seymour Fry's dog, which is kind of weird looking back. Um, we did that boss like a conscientious objector, by the way. We didn't actually fight him. Uh, we were able to just sort of use geometry to go around him. So shout outs to that. Now we're in Leela. We're going to start seeing, uh, seeing some Leela tech. Um, but back to, back to the more pertinent thing, the episodes. <laughs> um, no, and then I think Luck of the Fryerish is my all-round favorite of those three. But nowadays, I think, I think Game of Tones is the one that kind of hits me the hardest, just with the ending. Um, which is about sort of Fry gets to see his mother again, but it's only in her dreams, and they sort of share a nice moment. Aww. Yeah. It's impressive that you know, and, and a lot of people in chat seem to know the episode names, because that's like where I fall apart. Like, I, I can't remember <laughs> the names of episodes to save my life. Uh, I think I was at a point during COVID when I would just watch the show so much, and I, I, I had, like, highest level knowledge where I could, like, call out the exact number of like the exact season and number of the episode i can't do that anymore um, oh my gosh <laughs> well, the real question is when is uh, the youtube with with the futurama lore <laughs> oh, lore <honestly>. master dan <laughs> my friends <laughs> school everyone on the show <laughs> no it's um it's such a like i think that's my favorite thing about it compared to the simpsons is um it has this like incremental character development that they they stick with over time um, so when something is, like, revealed about a character, they tend to actually keep that in the show. Um, and I really like that. It really felt like you were growing with the world and with the characters. Um, it's really cool. Um, so I'll, I will talk about okay. Leela for a little bit and give us uh, Leela 101 with her tech. So this is that angled door I was talking about. It's a bit of a pain. There we go. Um, it's just because it's on a strange angle. It's a bit weird to clip through. So the redirect is back in full force. 
And you also saw me taking down some skeletons. There's an optimal way to defeat skeletons. Lila's jump kick gives you quite a lot of control over her, and it doesn't kill your momentum, so that's a very uh, desirable move to use. Uh, she also has a flying kick, which is used, like, twice in the whole run. And uh, that's handy pretty much for just crossing gaps. It's kind of like a really gimped long jump from, like, Mario. <laughs> um, and then we will also have something called a hitbox reduction or, like, a roll cancel. They're pretty much the same thing. Um, so Leela's roll, and this is where things get really... Put on your, your thinking caps again, because I'm going to give another dissertation on how redirects work. Um, so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when we do a roll cancel, which is just rolling and doing a punch, um, Leela's hitbox temporarily uh, shrinks. I'm just going to grab this health. Temporarily shrinks when we do a roll. And if we punch partway through that roll, we get a different... We, we keep that hitbox. That's let, that lets me poke in the ceiling here. And then I do a full roll. And the full roll, at the end of the roll, the uh, hitbox goes back to normal. So that brings our hitbox back to normal. And the game pinches us through the ceiling here. So it becomes this interesting thing where sometimes we need the reduced hitbox to press up into the ceiling. And sometimes we need to do a full roll for a redirect. So we need to restore that smaller hitbox. Um, and we'll see that in Inner Temple a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's just completely insane. Left wing and right wing. Whoops. I thought I was on Temple Courtyard for a second. Um, Left wing and right wing are big gauntlets for Leela. So generally you would redirect past that cutscene trigger like that. Uh, but I thought I was playing a different level. <laughs> I thought I was playing the level after this. I was, I was dreaming of this one already being over, I guess. Um, so redirects aren't just good for going <laughs> through walls. Um, redirects are good for skipping triggers as well. So that's stuff I was mentioning in Fry. So anything that spawns enemies or makes us sit through like an in-level cutscene, uh, like the one I got at the beginning, really handy to be able to skip. Um, you just want to make sure you're still hitting the triggers you need for things to spawn. I, uh, I did a marathon run for Australian speedruns, shoutouts to those guys, and um, I skipped a checkpoint trigger that I just didn't even know about at the time, and both myself and Liquid, who was on uh, commentary, were just so puzzled, and I had to actually use a backup save, but thankfully, like, immediately after the run ended, I was like, right, I'm looking that up out of spite, and I am fixing this out of spite, never again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just all those little hidden things. Yeah, that's uh, kind of fun that, that the two of you were there to work that out. <laughs> oh, it's it's a pretty funny moment in the actual vod because you can hear how completely just gobsmacked we both are. We both have just no <laughs> idea what just happened. And yeah, it's it's, it's pretty funny because you've got like two high level runners of the game just completely stumped. It's pretty comedic. Perfect. But yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, jumping on the bell, I just do that for fun. That's the one thing in this game you don't have to worry about. So here's that flying kick I told you about. Takes us a little further over that gap. Uh, you can also get there with a really fancy redirect, but it's a little slower. Um, again, so once we've established the bread and butter with this game, it's just sort of making sure we're hitting our triggers and getting good redirects, and it all becomes about fundamentals. So we're past the understanding phase. So there's a little trigger there that actually tells the rest of the level to load, and that's what that little, this little rumbling audio cue, that's what sort of uh, tells us that it's okay to go back. So then we go up on the ceiling here, and we avoid this really slow segment with these sinking platforms. Uh, we touch this door because it loads uh, the end of level trigger, and we stand on these really narrow platforms and jump across, and we made it. That's awesome. Uh, missing that one is a pain. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's I, I motor mouth on this game super hard because there's like constantly something going on. It's it's really crazy. <laughs> Oh Thankfully. no, you're completely fine. I mean, I, if I knew more about the run, I would assist. But you know, I'm over here uh, in <laughs> awe, just like everyone else is. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a really good time. It's it's always I always enjoy sort of like doing the shortest 101 tutorial as I commentate. So thankfully, Temple Courtyard here is super easy. By the way, just two redirects. I messed up the beginning, but um, no big deal. So, is there an actual uh, guide for the ga the game, the speed run? Uh, so I am writing one. Uh, it's sort of in oh. progress. So it's like a okay. it's a Google Doc that's on the speedrun.com page. And it's uh, also in my Twitch bio. Uh, and it basically, it covers all of the tech that you use in the run. There's like two pieces of tech that it, I don't have written down yet, but they're sort of outdated. They're not used anymore. Um, and they're both to do with Leela. Uh, and then we have... Uh, yeah, so every piece of tech is covered, and my plan for the guide is to have like a level-by-level -level breakdown that shows uh, basically the optimal uh, version of each level, and then 
alternative strategies of like varying skill levels so runners have options to get started. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, so that's that's the grand plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck with it. Thank you. Yeah, no, so hopefully that turns out well. A um, little bit of info on Inner Temple here. This is the redirect gauntlet. Um, so when you go through a lot of doors here, Leela will actually be on quite narrow platforms. You can also get killed by a lot of hazards like that, which is unfortunate. Oh my god. Let's take it easy. There we go. Um, so lots to worry about in this level. Um, so it's all about your spacings and um, how good you can be. And unfortunately, I'm not being the best at the moment, but we'll get through it. <laughs> um, so we're taking advantage of like a lot of triggers and a lot of movement. So if we didn't die here, uh, this sinking platform actually wouldn't start sinking. It's tied, I believe, to that nearby skeleton being spawned. Uh, but obviously, we left him alive the first time, so this wouldn't have sunk. But because we respawned, the game just goes, oh, you're at this checkpoint. We'll get rid of that skeleton, and this will work as intended. So shout-outs to the programmers. They actually they did the right thing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Inner Temple is this huge test of all of your abilities as Leela. Uh, and it ends with a boss which you can do a really cool manip on, so hopefully that goes well. Life count is a little low, but it should be okay. So what I, what I used there was Leela's special move, which we have precisely one of, <laughs> um, one pip. And we just use that as sort of like the rockets in Fry, big area of effect attack that can take out a lot of skeletons at once. Uh, here's the only tile puzzle in the game you need to memorize, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, this level is full of them casually, uh, where you either need to hit every tile in the room or watch a pattern and memorize it. Uh, and yeah, we only have to do it the one time. All right, so zero lives, a little bit scary. <laughs> so what I might try to do, we can actually point out a pretty fun little mechanic. I think it's every... Actually, no, it's every 50, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, the little pickups on the ground... Uh, so Fry had money, Bender had like these crystals, and Leela has these gold bars. Um, when you pick up 50, you get an extra life. So it's pretty much like coins in Mario or uh, Wampa Fruit and Crash Bandicoot, that kind of thing. Except you don't need 100, because I guess the game would uh, just give up and stop performing well if they had to put that many collectibles around. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. There's also, uh, they did, I'm going to give the programmers some credit here, they did make these spikes correctly. Uh, the only reason they're not hitting me is because they did something else incorrectly, and I am using uh, Leela's hitbox to sort of just squeeze under them. Ooh, hang on. It's a little scary. Ooh, is there health? There's no health. Okay, this is a little bit terrifying. I'm actually trying to figure out how I'm going to route this. So a game over in this game, which could happen, that would be not great. Um, means that you get booted to the main menu. Um, so not a big deal in a marathon context, because we can always just load a save. But this game is actually timed with in-game time. <laughs> so, oh, thank God, okay. we got another life. So it's every 25, so we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Lilo's, I was actually uh, sweating. <laughs> Giving you <laughs> the run around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's the tough part. You need basically full health on Sun God here. So I get one try. Hopefully we get it. So yeah, if you get booted to the main menu in an actual run, that's, that's GG. Um, and we, we would like to have an alternative, but just because of the way the game calculates time, um, in-game time is kind of ideal. Okay, we got it. So this is... I'm, uh, I'm going to put that on hold. This is Sun God. Uh, he's the only character in the game you can move by rolling. And this is the secret extra ability of Leela's uh, roll. Oh, sorry, of her hitbox uh, when we cancel it. We keep that property of the roll that lets us push things. But because there's only one enemy, you never really think about it until this point. So by pushing him to the edge of the platform... I don't know how this is working. There's probably someone a lot smarter than me that can figure it out. Oh, crap, I died. <laughs> That's unlucky. Um, we're going to go straight to yeah, Bogad. no worries. It's a big level. My apologies, chat. Um, that would have been... So you collect those four crystals and put them in their slots, and that will um, defeat the boss, basically. So you don't even really hit him. But you can run up to his platform, as I was doing there, 
and push him to the edge, and it glitches his, uh, him out and breaks the cycle on his uh, crystals, so we can pick them up really, really quickly. But unfortunately, that's like a five or six minute level, so I'm gonna leave that one be. There's a short tower climb at the end, and then that would have been the end of the level, but apologies, I couldn't show that in full. Oh, no worries. <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's RTA for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, so we're in Zoidberg, and this is sort of the big uh, finish. We're coming up on the finale of the game, and this is sort of our little uh, break before we go into that finale. Um, so Zoidberg is quite literally the like animal riding levels from Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I <laughs> yeah. see a little resemblance. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of Crash Bandicoot inspiration, uh, I'm going to call it, in this game. Um, but it makes it fun to play, so... I'm okay with it. I'll, I'll accept this plagiarism this one time. Uh, <laughs> but it's pretty. It's a pretty uh, breezy level after Leela. You get to sort of take a break. So similar to um, New New York and Run Bender Run, this is sort of an auto scroller. So we can't quite put the controller down and walk away, um, but we do get to take a bit of a, a brain break. Sure. Well, then let me ask you this, um, Dan. What do you think your stream schedule is going to be like this year? Hopefully better than last year. Because <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you hadn't streamed in a while when I messaged you, and I'm like, well, hmm, is he going to yeah, start no, I was, streaming well, a little more? <laughs> that's what made me surprised. I was like, oh, that's that's really cool. They want me on because I probably should have been streaming more to show, like, I'm being a bit proactive. Um, yeah, oh, so yeah no worries. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm studying in university right now, and I'm coming up on my final year. Um so oh, congrats thank you yeah i'm very keen to finally be done um and uh so i try to fit it in there and I'm, i had a schedule like 2020 21 sort of when lockdown was a thing and i didn't have to go out um but mm -hmm. now that that's less of a thing it's um a little bit trickier to fit in so i've started doing afternoons australian time recently um which coincidentally uh lined up very nicely with uh prepping people for hotfix so my international <laughs> viewers could set their <laughs> their body clocks accordingly. Oh yeah, it's it's always time zones. Uh, it's always confusing. <laughs> oh yeah, they're tricky. <laughs> but yeah, so that's probably what I'll be looking at um, while I'm still on break as well before the semester starts in February. Is um, trying to get some more daily afternoon streams in. I think. Um, oh, okay, cool. So you you have a little bit of time before you have to get back to the grind. Yeah, exactly. So shouldn't be too bad. Do you do you think that you'll be learning any new speedruns or, or doing any first playthroughs of games on, on your channel? Yeah, so I, there are two... There are actually three further bucket list games I have, but there's only two like I want to get onto in the immediate future. Um, so those two mm -hmm. are Sonic Heroes and Crash Bandicoot 2 for the PS1. All oh, right on. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't played uh, Heroes, but... Two, Crash Bandicoot 2, I have a lot of experience in. <laughs> That's a great game, yeah. Um, Heroes <laughs> is very busted. I mean, it's, just, it's, just, it's an early 3D Sonic game. It's got a lot of quirks, but um, I love it. I think the soundtrack and the um, <laughs> art direction is awesome, and it's a great speedrun. Um, awesome. Yeah, and then Crash We'll be Tears. looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah so it should be good. Um, speaking of 2003, the third game I'd like to get around to at some point is um, Rayman 3 for the GameCube. Um, which is just a, that's my favorite Rayman game, personally. Uh, two in a nice. close second place. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a platformer as well? Yeah, sort of like a platformer action game kind of thing. Cool. And just got some insane movement and glitches. There's, I think it's called, like, you go into, like, look mode and you can spam a button and it just gives you, like, tons of height. So runners just, like, go out of bounds and avoid tons of, like, uh, past the level. That that's my favorite kind of uh, run to watch is when everyone's going out of bounds and completely breaking the game. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's really great. Um, so like so when you were going through with Fry in the sewers, I'm like, all right, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's the best thing about Fry because you start in Planet Express and you're like, eh, this doesn't seem that impressive. And then you get to sewers and it just goes <laughs> completely off the rails right away. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking of this level, uh, at the beginning, I sort of jumped down and hit a checkpoint trigger on my way to the ground. Um, and that's what allowed me to respawn down there. We skipped a lot of triggers as well, which is why that floor was invisible. So just weird things are happening. Um, so now we have two levels to go. We have Leela and Fry. And uh, Leela is immediately interesting because we're going to do this level like backwards or in this like weird, really weird route. So we're going to get out of bounds 
at the beginning here, which, put, which puts us on the ceiling of this room. We're going to jump on a turret out of bounds that we can't see, but we know it's there. <laughs> and now we're on the ceiling on sort of like the end of the level. But this level has the, it has the weirdest trigger in the whole game. Um, you don't have to hit a button, you just need to open a door. Um, and it will, it opens like automatically. You're usually meant to have a key card, so it's a bit of a tight jump here. We got it, nice. And we die immediately to those mines. So, big strat here that's really important is not hitting a checkpoint, because being at the beginning of the level is really close to the end. So we do the same thing again, go out of bounds, and then we just go here and we hold interact, and we hit the end level lever from out of bounds, <laughs> and that's the whole level done. So we do the whole thing like backwards from above and then respawn and go straight to the end. Fantastic, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a great level, and that, that's another one with a lot of history uh, behind it. It's really cool. Want to try a new strat here? Okay, didn't get it, that's all right. Uh, we can stand on those little training targets and jump up. But uh, we'll just do it the normal way here. So this is the final level of the game. This is Fry Fight's Bag. Um, if you're wondering what happened in the middle of the game, surprisingly not much. Um, we tried to escape Earth. We got stopped and put on an asteroid. We got off the asteroid. Then they got to us again and threw us at the sun. Then we got off the sun. Then we time traveled. And this is where things get confusing in typical Futurama fashion. Uh, <laughs> and now we're back at the start of the game trying to stop the professor from selling Planet Express. Um, but Mom has thrown us down into her, like, death trap to stop us, so we're trying to get out. And, um, I won't, I won't spoil the ending. I'm actually gonna leave that one a secret. Uh, but if you're, uh, if you're interested, it's, it's all up on YouTube. It's a very entertaining viewing. Um, so this is, uh, Fry Fight's Back. It's a surprisingly humble final level. Um, there's not really too much to it. Um, we're just picking up key cards. We've got this fun railgun, which just one-shots every standard enemy in the game. Um, so we're just quickly locking on and then hitting A and removing, literally just deleting them on site, basically. Um, and we just have to punch in door codes, and I think this is the standout element of the game for people that played it. Um, is these door codes were really weird because you looked at all these numbers and thought maybe you had to like make a maths equation or something. It's fulfilling a pattern, so like this one's counting up and down at the same time. Um, so it goes like 0, 9, 8, 1, um, 7, 2, 6, 5, that sort of thing. But when you look at the numbers, like, all out of, like, with all of them missing, it's so confusing. <laughs> and it's, it's very famous. I think there's, like, a, there's a really funny YouTube review. I forget his name. He's, like, this Australian YouTuber. He gets so mad at this game <laughs> when he gets to this level. <laughs> I think he does the, like, that AVGN thing where he just, like, breaks the game at the end, which... In my opinion, that's a waste of a good disc, but oh, he was, he was mad. He had to blow off some steam. <laughs> I get it. Um, yeah, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, and then aside from that, there's a little bit of platforming with these like, huge platforms that you'll see. And you have to really respect those because they can sort of squeeze you in between the wall and the platform and kill you, which is not great. Uh, and then, of course, there is um, the final boss. And the final boss is probably the most interesting part of this game, especially... Um, or of this level, I should say, not of the game, but of the level, um, especially from a speedrunner's perspective, because he's RNG. Uh, he's the only major RNG in this game. Like, everything else is pretty minor, it's really small, he's huge. Um, and we can manipulate him a little bit, which you'll see shortly, but we're pretty much depending on his attacks to be good, so... Uh, if I didn't have that, uh, that game over showcase, is what we'll call it, in, in a temple, um, then I would be <laughs> quite no nervous. No one saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was a demonstration. You know what the game over screen looks like now. Um, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's very, very nerve-wracking when you get to this point in, the, um, in, a, in a full run, because you're just sort of hoping that he's nice to you. So that's an example with that platform there. I let it pass. Um, just because letting it squeeze me there would just result in a very slow death. All right, so here's how we manipulate Destructor. He's our final boss. We're standing where he can see us, but his gun can't actually physically hit me. Um, and by doing that, uh, by having line of sight to me, the game is sort of like, okay, well, I'm going to keep trying to attack you, and I'm going to cycle through my attacks, and we can stand here and do absolutely nothing, um, which is fantastic. So he's actually being quite nice to me. He's taunting me because I got a game over. Um, but uh, <laughs> so whenever he opens up his weak point, uh, that's our chance to sort of get back at him. Something else to look out for. Oh, wow, his RNG was great. Uh, time will be coming up when the results screen shows up. 
Um, there we go. Wow, that's time. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, GG. Yeah, sorry, that that sneaks up on you, but um, <laughs> yeah, he can, he can push you, and you, you want to stand in that spot, basically. But that's that's future armor. It's it's a, a wild ride, both to play and to commentate, and I really love it. So yeah. Oh yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Dan, for showing this game off. That again, so <laughs> many of us didn't realize existed. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having um, me. Of course. Do you have any um, shout outs or comments you'd like to to give before we wrap it up tonight? Yeah, um, I guess I'll just remind everyone if, if you're interested in this game, there's a community discord, there's a guide. Um, and I'd just like to shout out some community members and just people that have like supported uh, my channel and me. Um, shout outs to Dot .u for being like so devoted to the game, probably more than me at the moment. They're a genius with levels. Shout outs to Toxic Pinhead uh, for just doing so many like revolutions in the game. There's a lot of other members. Um, I'm forgetting his name, but there's there's a third one. Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, shout outs to Hannah Joe. He's sort of first put this game on the map. He ran it at ESA, and his ESA run is a really good look at the game in an earlier state. I think it's really entertaining because the game still had some very cool tricks. It's really entertaining. Um, shout outs to Liquid Wi-Fi, who was sort of my sparring partner with this game. We had a good history uh, with him chasing my record for a long time and kept on just getting a step ahead of him. He's And he's just super entertaining. He'll be on at AGDQ. Uh, and then I guess just to wrap up, shout outs to GDQ for having me on today. Um, ASM, oh, the Oz Speedruns Marathon, for having me on there and giving me opportunities to show this game off. Um, and... Uh, through the Nivea gang, <laughs> my my Discord of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nivea. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, I'll say it again, but if you did enjoy the run, make sure you follow uh, our runner tonight. That is Style and I here on Twitch, and I linked it in the chat to make it just that much easier for you. Um, but that is going to wrap up tonight's episode of Time Capsule. If you are watching this on YouTube from the future and you enjoyed our show, uh, make sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you're interested in watching our shows live, you can always check us out at twitch.tv slash games done quick starting week nights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> uh, you can tune in tomorrow for No Category Left Behind, followed by Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, all starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. I have been your host, Smooth Operative. Uh, you can always find me at twitch.tv slash smoothoperative if you have any questions about Time Capsule or you want to talk about the show with me. Uh, be happy to hear your thoughts. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. Have a beautiful day or night, and we will see you next time. Goodbye and Happy New Year. See ya.